Hello everyone and welcome to Edison TV. My name is Jyoti Prakash, a healthcare analyst here at the Edison Group. We are joined today by Sten Sorensen, the CEO of Sereno Scientific, a company harnessing the properties of HTAC inhibition to develop disease-modifying treatments for rare diseases. Welcome, Sten. Hi, Jyoti. Uh, pleased to be, me, be here with you. Nice to meet you again, Sten. Uh, first of all, Sten, Congratulations on receiving the fast track designation for your lead asset CS1. What does this mean for Sereno and how does it impact your plans for CS1 in PH? Well, thank you. Um, we're really excited about this, uh, which we believe is a key regulatory milestone. Um, and maybe the most important milestone after our clinical data that we have delivered on our lead project CS1 in PH in phase 2a and then CSO 14 completing the phase one trial this uh, this spring and, and summer. So we view this as uh, a confirmation from the FDA on the reg on the potential of uh, our asset CS1 in pH and its promise to potentially impact uh, pathological remodeling in this disease and that that potential is beyond what's currently available on the market. Great. So my next question is um, about Sotatacept, which, which is also developing treatments for PAH. Now, it received FDA approval in March and has reported more than $400 million in revenues in 2024. And we believe this highlights the market opportunity for disease-modifying treatments in this space. What kind of read across do you see here for CS1? Well, um, I, I do believe and concur with that it highlights the uh, unmet need in the market for uh, these patients and the uh, ability or a hope for more efficacy in these patients, so which I believe uh, Vinrivera Sotartocept is uh, delivering. However, I don't think that's uh, really related to disease-modifying capacity of Sotartocept so far. There has been no... Uh, labeling or documentation to that effect, I believe. So, um, however, the uh, untapped need and the potential in the market uh, is highlighted, and we believe that that strengthened the potential of uh, CS1, which we believe will add disease modifying capacity to the uh, uh, treatment options that are there, including Vindrover. Great. We look forward to the progress you make with CS1. Thank you. Uh, moving on to moving on to your second asset, CSO14, which is also an HTAC inhibitor. It recently reported positive phase one results. Can you touch upon some of the key highlights from these results? Yeah, absolutely. So CSO14 is the new generation HTAC inhibitor and our second asset in this class. And we are pioneering this class into cardiovascular and pulmonary rare diseases uh, and with the hope that we can impact the pathological remodeling and also deliver oral, very safe and well tolerated drugs uh, in these spaces. And uh, there is an untapped need for uh, oral drugs and for safe and well tolerated drugs beyond disease modifying capacity. So for CSO14 specifically, and phase one studies, as we all know, is uh, has the key and primary objective to study safety and tolerance in, in uh, volunteers. So uh, we're very happy with the data. The uh, uh, study confirmed that CSO14 is very safe. There were no adverse and safety concerns. And the tolerance uh, safety aspects was uh, minor and uh, transient. So uh, very good results for us for CSO 14. I also would like to highlight that we were able to um, document exposures on the same levels in patients or in these volunteers in humans as we have seen uh, in our animal work is enough to have a disease modifying capacity. So we're happy with the results of CSO 14, and now we're on to the next level. Great. Uh, with these results in the bag, 
the next big clinical push is expected to come in H126 for both CS1 and CSO14. What are some of the key deliverables and focus areas for Sereno in the run-up to these more advanced clinical studies? Well, uh, so for CS1, uh, we are uh, we got the uh, fast track designation, you know, yesterday. Uh, very happy with that, and then um, we are pursuing, of course, our, all our preparations, and we have highlighted that we come to an agreement with a very top level CRO that's uh, active in the space and has been uh, that we are collaborating with now on our regulatory process to get the, the design and the protocol for that phase 2b trial for CS1 accepted by regulatory authorities FDA and others as this will be a global trial uh, and we uh, expect that to happen during the fall and then we will gear up to recruit the first patients in H1 of next year. Uh, we're also scaling up our production for to have tablets and medicines available, of course, and placebo for that trial. Um, very much looking forward to that. For CSO14, we just finished the uh, phase one trial and reported that. So we are also gearing up for uh, that study from a regulatory process a point of view and uh, are pursuing that and uh, expect that to be happened early next year and then initiate that trial and of course CSO 14 is targeting pulmonary rare diseases IPF uh, is the current target and uh, there's a, a very high unmet need for disease modification even in that uh, disease. So I'm um, very much looking forward to to these two regulatory uh, key milestones, but there's a lot of work in the background, of course, to get these ready to start. Great. And we would like to shift focus a bit to your third asset, CS585, which is also quite promising. What is the current status of this program and when can we expect it to enter the clinic? Well, we are uh, continuing our preclinical work with CS585 that, as the audience might know, uh, we have an uh, in-license from University of Michigan, and actually the inventor is Mike Hollinstadt, professor at University of Michigan. And we have documented some very uh, interesting and promising characteristics of CS585 as a very selective and potent and expected to be oral prostacycline receptor agonist. And we've seen long-term and potent action compared to other agents in that field. So um, we're expecting to move towards the clinic and I assume we'll be there sometime in 2027. That's great, good to know that 585 is also making progress. Uh, moving on, um, Sereno was recently included in the NASDAQ First North 25 Index. Have you seen any differences in terms of uh, capital accessibility and market interest following this transition? Well, I think in general, uh, Georgie, we have seen a lot of increasing interest in Sereno as a company and what we are about. And I think, of course, the clinical data that we and the progress that we have uh, uh, been able to deliver over the last six, nine months uh, is uh, underscoring, uh, you know, the potential and also the interest here. Uh, so the interest is also, it's seen both from the um, investment side, uh, senior investment banks, uh, partnering interest, big pharma, special pharma, as well as the retail sector. And in fact, we have grown over the last six months, we've grown our retail base and investors with more than 20%. So we are currently around 12,000 uh, shareholders in Sereno. And there is a very core uh, group in that uh, retail base that's following every step we take. And uh, we feel that we have a very committed and almost passionate retail base about what we do. So, um, and um, I, I believe that uh, the group is uh, the general shareholder group that's increasing. It has 
an increasing interest and a belief that we will be successful. And of course, that's helpful when you pursue programs in biotech, as you know. Great. And our next question is on financing, uh, an important topic given that clinical development is a very capital intensive exercise. How important is it for Sereno to find a partner for your lead programs? Well, uh, I think I've said this uh, a few times, and that's still our, our strategy. So we are pursuing two channels uh, or processes forward. Uh, one is we're always prepared and working on our ability to raise capital by ourselves with interested parties, if it's on the market or if it's the special interest uh, and so on. And we are doing that with the neighbors when it's appropriate. So there's always a readiness to, to do uh, capitalization of Sereno. And I think the ability to do so is increasing with the interest and the market cap that we have and we are about three billion currently um, so that's one process the other process which we have increased activities on over the last 12 months i would say uh, uh, when our first data came out on cs1 we've started to expose the company broadly to the pharma and partnering uh, sector sector segment and we have had and we have interesting discussions uh, with several parties in that field. And uh, so that's another avenue of pursuing these uh, two assets forward. And let's see where we end up eventually with this. This is a strategic um, uh, question. And uh, we believe we are uh, have the ability to raise capital, uh, but partnering is not the best strategic move for a company like Sereno, but it has to be on good terms. Right, that's, that's very useful, Stan. And just to wrap up, as we approach the end of 2025, what can investors look forward to in the coming months from Serena? Well, uh, I think what they can look forward to is uh, to continue to be involved with this passionate, very competent uh, team that Serena is. We're 10 people full time and maybe 100 people globally that's working with our vision and our plans. And um, I think the investors, uh, current and hopefully new ones, uh, can look forward to us delivering on our plans uh, and our expectations as we believe we have done. Uh, and that's also, I think, uh, reflected in the increasing, the staying power of investors and the increasing interest and the growing volume of shareholders. So. Uh, investors should look forward to us completing our milestones that uh, we have highlighted we are aiming for, and um, we'll take it from there. That's great. Thank you, Stan, for giving us your time today and sharing your thoughts on the recent developments with Sereno. For our audience wanting to learn more about Sereno Scientific, please refer to edisongroup.com. Thanks Thank again, you. sir. <laughs>